Hey, so in this video, I'll show you how to create this shader, which can uh, tile a texture, and at the same time, it can randomly rotate each tile. Um, if you just need the shader resource, you can just get it from the description of the video. Um, I'll be using the visual shader um, to create the shader just to make it easier to see some of the ideas, but I'll go over a written version of the shader and both are available in the project. Okay, so to start out with here, I've created a shader with uh, three uniforms, one for tiling, one for to randomize rotation, and uh, one for the uh, texture, which we're calling albedo here. So if we want to start out with uh, setting up the tiling, we need to change the UVs. Um, so if we have a look at the UVs first, we can see here, it basically looks like this crazy gradient with if you're not used to UV maps, if we um, if we look at this, the separate uh, axis, it might be a bit more understandable here. So we can just see that uh, it's basically just X values going from, from 0 to 1 and Y values going from 0 to 1. So if we, uh, if we manipulate, you can see here, this is the same as is in there from the beginning. So if we, if we plug that in, it, nothing, nothing happens. But if we manipulate this value before we do, um, we'll get different tiling, for example. So if we try and, and multiply, you know, uh, this with two, for example, what we can see is now instead of going from, from zero to one, we're going from zero to one and then beyond. We, we can't see those values because they're, they're clipping, right? So if we do the same for the, for the entire uh, UV here, which is a vector two, so we'll just need the, the first two values. Then we'll see the same thing happens. Um, we're getting values from, from zero to one here, and then we're, we're going on to two actually, but the values start clipping at that point. If we run this uh, into here, we can see that we are indeed tiling. So this, this looks like a, we've basically fixed it. At this point, we, we have our tiling. The problem is that because we want to do rotation as well, we don't want values, um, UV values that go beyond one. We only want them to be zero to one. So luckily there's a very easy way to, to fix this. We have um, a function called uh, fract, which uh, basically only um, returns the decimals instead of the, the whole numbers. So if we do this, we can see we end up with this instead, which looks um, a bit prettier. And we're basically going zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. And if we put that in here, it should look exactly the same as, as the other one. Oh, that was not what I wanted. So yeah, so now we have the tiling that we want. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out how to rotate as well. So I have a little scalar value here just so I can more easily manipulate it. Um, so what we need to do to uh, to rotate the UVs is to use a rotation matrix, uh, which is just a, a practical way to apply a trigonometry. Um, so to create one, um, it's called a, a transform in here. So we need a transform compose. Um, we actually only need a two by two vector. Uh, so we'll only be using the first values, but um, in the visual shader, you always get a, a three by four um, matrix. So what we need to put into that is um, is two vectors, so we'll do a, a vector compose. We will actually do two. Um, and these will go in here. And into them, we need to um, put in the, the cosine of our angle, which I guess is just zero at the moment. We'll put the cosine in here, and we'll also put the cosine in here, and then we'll do the the sine, and we are going to put that in here, and then we need a negative version of the the sine, which we will put in here. Okay, so now we have our rotation matrix already. Um, and we then need to take the UV map and uh, multiply it by our, 
our matrix and we'll do that like this. So let's take our UVs, let's multiply them by the matrix and let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing happens because we have set no value in here. So if we set this to dot three or something, um, remember this is in radians, so like um, 3.14 will be half a rotation, for example. Um, we can see we're rotating, but it, it'll, it'll probably get, um, if we try and do 3.14, this should be 180 degrees. That actually looks perfectly fine. It's probably more clear what the issue is. A bit more interesting. Yeah, here we have the issue. So the issue is that um, even though this is um, doing the right thing, you can see that the, the UVs are, are sort of getting uh, out of out of bounds almost. That's because we're we're not rotating around the the center um, of each tile. We are rotating uh, down in the corner instead. So uh, we can really easily fix this. We just need to offset um, the UVs before we rotate them and then offset them back again uh, afterwards. That's sort of the typical way of rotating. You you place something in the center of the coordinate system before you before you do the rotation. So we will subtract dot five and we'll put that in here instead. And then we just need to add dot five dot five and put that in here. And then you can see then they're central and we should be able to put any kind of value in here. And uh, and it looks fine. So yeah. So now we can we can tile and we can uh, we can rotate. We can uh, we can go over to using this value instead. And we can now rotate. We can tile and then let's see if we can figure out how to do random rotation next. Okay. And now then to get the random rotation, we'll use a method that's um, often used to uh, do pseudo random um, numbers and that is to uh, to take a vector and uh, do some big calculation on it and return the fract of that um so this um this i pasted in here that's just taken from book of shaders there's a link in the description um, for that and i'm just doing it here as an an expression instead of uh, of doing it as nodes because it would take like five separate nodes to to do it or something like that. So we can see here this uh, node I've made now. If we plug the UV into that, we will get noise, um, which is of course not exactly what we want. We we want a random um, value for each uh, of the squares instead of a random value for every pixel. So the way we can the way we can fix that is by taking um, the multiplied version of the UVs here, and if we uh, if we use the round function on that, and then afterwards we divide that with the the tiling amount, then we'll actually get what we want, except for the fact that it is offset by uh, half a value, so we'll just um, oh, wrong one. We will just subtract m dot five before we uh, do the rounding, and then you can see then we have exactly what we want here. If we put that into the the randomizer, then we get random uh, values from zero to one for each of our squares. So. If we go down here, then we bring it down here, and then we uh, multiply that by our rotation value, and then we plug this in as our rotation values. Then you can see we're getting something uh, much more interesting now. We're getting rotations. One problem we're having though is that everything is rotating the same way. Um, that might be fine, but like, um, and uh, a way we can fix that is by uh, 
um, by subtracting um, dot five and multiplying by two. Um, and that'll just rescale the values um, so they are between uh, minus one and one instead of between zero and one. And that means that if we uh, we set that to zero, if we increase it, you can see we, we're, we're rotating in the different directions. So that's basically that. That's uh, rotation sorted. Now, unfortunately, we do have one error that we need to fix here. And that is that we are getting these ugly seams between uh, each tile, and I'll fix that uh, next up. So the reason we're getting these lines in between each tile is that we're getting um, bad lookups in the LOD. So basically, whenever you're sampling a texture, it decides which uh, LOD to look at based on how far away um, the object is and what angle you're looking at, and it does that calculation by looking um, at uh, at the UV um, and like how much difference is in the UV across um, the space here. And because we have these UVs with big jumps, we end up getting errors um, at the edges here. Um, so you can manually uh, tell a texture instead to look at a different uh, LOD, a and that's basically what we have to do. There isn't really an easy way to do that uh, in the visual scripting. I've, I made a custom node here, um, and what I'm using here is basically the same implementation um, that OpenGL uses to decide uh, which LOD level it should use. So if we take um, if we take the image sector and put it in through this uh, and the uh, the UV, and then instead of using uh, this UV to decide which um, LOD level we want, we take uh, this one which also has all the same sizes and is continuous. So when we use that one instead, we can see if we go over to this, then all the lines disappear and it looks completely correct. And we can, you know, we can do whatever we want here. Everything just looks as it should. So obviously this ends up being quite the monster as a visual shader, but uh, we also have a written version of it here, which is a, a bit easier to, um, to pass maybe. Um, so yeah, we have the the random function, uh, and we have the um, the selection of the LOD level, which I used that little node for I made before. And then here we're basically just doing all the same stuff, um, and it ends up being quite short when it's written out like this. So um, you can you can use this shader, and you can easily extend it for whatever else you need it to do. So thank you for watching. If you like this tutorial and would like to support me in making more. Uh, and in making open source projects like my Godot add-ons, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. And a uh, special thanks to my first ever patron, Marcus Richter.